Hi folks and welcome to your Jersey Net immediate post-match reaction pod coming to you in association with Forest Precision Engineering. My name is Alec Anderson and I'm speaking to you from outside Ibrox after Rangers who won League Cup win over Morton. Um, this afternoon a win that sees Michael Beale having won in three different competitions in Ibrox already this season. Uh, a game that sees two of our new strikers, Danilo and Dessers, getting more goals to their name. Uh, for all of you that don't like James Tavernier, well we won without him even in the squad today. Even scored a penalty without him. In fact, we replaced them with three different players today. Uh, Dujon Sterling, Adam Devine, and in between times, just a, a big bit of empty grass. And, yeah, we, we, we come away with the win after that terrible draw, a really boring draw we had. That was far too tight for a lot of people uh, on Wednesday night, and here we are. You know. <laughs> Jesus. Aye. Um, yeah, we, we, we beat Morton. We beat Morton, uh, a championship side by two goals to one in the League Cup last 16. <laughs> It's funny, after the most worried I was going to be today, it was not that bit you put your smart card season ticket against the wee reader thing, and you're just thinking, I've ticked all the boxes in the form, you know, I have signed up to the continual credit card scheme, I think of enough money in my account, I go all the emails, but it's that wee tiny, there's a few seconds delay always, isn't there, before the, the green light comes on, and why is it a green light? I think we should do something about that, Mr Bisgrove. Why is it a green light that lets you into Ibrox, you know? I thought that was uh, the, the most kind of worried I was going to be today. I also thought the most disappointed I was going to be was when I saw Morton wearing an all-yellow kit. You know, second Saturday in a row, we're playing Sunday in all-yellow. I want to see Morton in their traditional uh, blue and white hoops, like what they beat us in the 1922 Scottish Cup final. And, and uh, yeah, I've, I've got to be honest, uh, there was a woman, a lassie behind the counter at half-time, and I tried to cheer myself up with a... We had a pie. I just went for a Scottish pie the day. I felt as if it was a kind of, you know, domestic cup game. Just go for a Scottish pie and a, a Fanta. And it was a, a fuzzy Fanta of the day. That was, that was quite nice. But she was kind of singing and dancing. You know, really lovely. She was, you know, giving me a wee wave and all that. No, right, she's just, no, no, none of that kind of, you're next. But she's having a wee wave and all that. And singing and dancing. I'm thinking, she's at her work. And she's having a better time than me. This is my Saturday. This is my leisure time. And um, that first half was brutal. It looked for a long time the day that Todd Cantwell was still going to win the Man of the Match award, uh, despite the fact he wasn't even in the squad. And he wasn't on the only one not in the squad. That was a big talk in the day. Neil Banfield, he was lying to us yesterday. He said yesterday, Neil Banfield, when Michael Beale pulled him out to do the pre-match presser, that uh, the, the team would be putting out today wouldn't be about people staking a claim, wouldn't be about people getting fitness in the legs. It would be about you know, focusing on doing everything we could to beat Morton. I'm paraphrasing here. And uh, I thought, well, there's no chance of uh, John Lee Fecko, <laughs> for example, being in the squad. I saw an interview with that young man after he'd captained the B team to a, uh, it was an SPFL Community Cup win over Stenhouse Muir at Oakle View during the week and he was talking about how he'd enjoyed the physical challenge and it was a, it was a pleasure for him to, an honour for him to, to captain any team at any level at uh, Rangers and I'm thinking, well, he should be getting that maybe a wee try out on Saturday, but Neil Banfield gave me to believe that he wasn't going to, and yet he came out today and in the very first minute he put in a, a challenge that's really showed the kind of onomatopoeia in his name. It's the feckle, the feckle, you take that. Uh, on the big, burly Morton centre centre forward, took the guy completely out of the game, completely cleanly, and in the last minute of the game, uh, Big John Lee also <laughs> put in an absolutely match saving tackle. I don't know which Morton player it was, maybe it was the same player, uh, to deny them when they were clean through on goal. This was a, a day of uh, cloths being touched all round, bums kind of squeaking. It was not a comfortable a comfortable exercise at all. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm quite glad in a way that Tav wasn't playing, Borna wasn't playing, uh, John Souter was rested, and uh, obviously uh, Todd Cantwell and his best buddy Nico Raskin. They weren't in the squad either, and you're thinking that's quite good because it will keep the, the muscle memory for them as we go into this big game on Tuesday night. A really intense, massive European game. They will be coming off the back still of a massive European game, a really intense continental test on Wednesday against Survey. I wouldn't want this in their system today. I wouldn't want this game to go into their system and kind of uh, distract them because this is the problem with these games. Yes, it's, you're quite right to, to take the opportunity when you're playing lower league opposition to to rest certain players and, and, and build up the, the fitness of other players. You know, we still maintain the kind of same, you know, uh, Dessers were starting up front, you would Sam Lammers, we're getting Robbie Matondo in there, um, yeah, John Lundstrom's getting a run out, he's playing a kind of pivotal role, I mean, pivot role just in front of it, what looked like a three-man uh, defence for most of the game, and it was good to get Dujon Sterling in there, as I say. But 
we haven't won a domestic. We've won two domestic cups <laughs> in what twelve years, isn't it? Uh, a lot of the supporters are really upset. Don't really care about European progress, much as an old guy like me absolutely cherishes it. Um, but they don't really care about European progress. It's all about domestic cups, and I think that's Michael Beale's seventh domestic cup game since he came to Rangers. He's lost two of them. Uh, obviously, both the games against Celtic last season, but the rest of them, he's only won them by one goal. Uh, other than a 3 0 doing of Wraith Rovers in the Scottish Cup uh, last season here at Ibrox. Again, you know, Wraith Rovers being at another championship side, and we took our time uh, getting round to, to putting that one to bed that day. I feel we really need to be getting a bit of muscle memory into how to win domestic trophies again. We need to be getting the players ready to win in all competitions because. You could make yourself a hero just by winning, you know, a few cups here this season. It's something Rangers, we really need in our system. We really need to, and part of the kind of comeback from 2012, we need to be getting domestic cups into us. And this continually dragging ourselves through League Cup and Scottish Cup matches is going to, it's wearing me down and it's going to wear the players down. And it's, it's creating not an expectation, but a, a lack of expectancy when it comes to these competitions. Um... Yeah, you know what it's like with these games, these kind of cup games. You do that thing, but you fool yourself into thinking, all oh, right, there'll not be any queues uh, for the pies because the crowd will not be as big. A lot of people don't sign up for the continual credit card thing. It's live on the telly, half 12, kind of funny kickoff time. A lot of people be forking out for the, the PSV game. It's £35 for me for my ticket for that one, so it's very expensive. So you know the crowd's going to be down. Nothing like the 264,000 who attended the two matches it took to settle the 1948 Scottish Cup between Rangers and Morton. And I thought, that means there's going to be you know, more folk. You know, we're getting easier to get a pie at half time, there'll be as big a queue. But what happens is Rangers account for that. They account for the smaller crowd. And they, you know, the staff goes down. They don't put as many staff behind the, the pie stalls. And it's the same with Rangers themselves. You're thinking, oh, we're playing a lower league team. We've got a chance to go and bang in a few goals. Shut up all the people uh, who already this season are complaining about Rangers. Nobody able to put games to bed. But... Rangers, you know, Neil Banfield, Michael Beale, they account for that and uh, they take, well, make eight changes to the squad and it breaks up the rhythm and you put in a lot of players who, you know, aren't really of this, this the standard that we want or who are trying to get back to the fitness level and what have you. Eventually saw uh, Kamar Roof today, Adam Devine come on as well and it was only 2-1 at the time, you know, we weren't really in a position where we could be risking this. But yeah, yeah we got through it in the end. Morton, uh, first half, they you know they hung in there for long spells. We looked, we looked quite threatening. I was trying to, I was actually getting more interest at the game than I was excitement. I was trying to work out our, our formation. Uh, it looked like a kind of three one four two, and a three one five one, whatever. It was. Sam Lammers kind of make up his mind, or Michael Beale kind of make up his mind whether he's. Uh, a, a second striker or he's just supporting uh, the main striker who was uh, Cyril Dessers today um, I think it's a lot more fluidity you can do both that's that, that's the point there John Lundstrom was playing this role and it looked like it looked to me like Dujon Sterling was more playing kind of right midfield at times I think when Morton were attacking us it come back to be a kind of 4-4-2 basically um, uh, John Lee Efeko Leon Balligan and Connor Golson. That seemed to be they seemed to be like playing like as, as a three, three centre halves. Jack Butland didn't goals. I think that was quite a good marker to put down. I'm, I'm complaining about uh, how we're performing domestic cups these days. But I think it was a good marker to put down from Bill. He's just saying we're not going to have any of that nonsense where you know the reserve goalie is going in for the cup games, the domestic cup games. It was uh, Jack Butland on there. We kind of needed him a few times a day, which uh, was a bit disappointing. But he came out of it pretty well, despite having a bit of a flap right in uh, the kind of 98th minute today. I don't know what, what went on up there. That's up the other end of the park for me. But Morton, again, could have been right up to the last, the very last moments of the game. They could be taking it to extra time in pens. Um, but, yeah, we, it seemed to be that Dujon Sterling was kind of playing really high. So I don't know if he's supposed to be at right back and he just he was being told to get up the park. But that was us. We are getting three three at the back of the day um, for the most of the game. And John Lundstrom sitting kind of in front of him on his own. And then it would Cifuentes, we had uh, Rabbi Matondo, he's piling up and down the left. Rabbi Matondo seems to have, he's not going to be the answer to, you know, <laughs> Ryan Kent. And <laughs> he's certainly not the answer to the Daniel Candace hole that's been left at the club. But I think he's decided to model himself on 
uh, the recently departed fashion Sakala, uh, which is just get the ball forward, just chase that thing down. It didn't work for the most part today. He's certainly got his speed and he's certainly a bit more confident looking, a bit more determined looking than it was in a lot of games last season, but he's still got a long way to go before he's a finished article. But uh, I was just trying to work out what was going on with our formations. Does this mean, you know, Michael Beale's going to try three at the back? Because we, against PSV Eindhoven, having watched, I watched their first game, uh, the, the previous round, the, the, the third round qualifier against Sturm Graz, and they were absolutely frightening, particularly down the, the left flank. And I'm thinking, is Michael Beale going to go with three centre-halves? And that kind of gives a bit of cover for, you know, the, the, the full-backs going forward. And maybe have John Lundstrom or... You know, Nico Raskin in there to kind of fall back and give it extra cover just in case because most of, a lot of our attack comes from the fullbacks and you don't want to be opening up too much against this PSV team. But I suddenly realised that all this interest in the tactics was distracting me from the fact that Rangers had done nothing. Um, 22, 1922 it was that Morton beat us in the, the Scottish Cup final and uh, there's a number 22 playing for them today and it was a 22nd minute I think where Dessers uh, went through on goal and he was trying his heart out the day, Cyril Dessers, I think he's got the message about us liking to see a bit of work rate and uh, he, he had the ball in the back of the net but it was it was blown for a foul, I think a foul on Kurt Broadfoot was it, Big Kirk, a man who's played in a European final for Rangers, a man who's uh, scored for his country and there he is, he was playing for he was an open goal broom hill this season but there he is playing against us today and doing his usual, big man's uh, vastly experienced and uh, a bit of character, a big Kirk, but uh, he certainly did himself proud today, but he got Morton off with at that point, news of seen it in telly, maybe it was a clear fill by Dessers, I don't know, but that was a wee bit of, kind of extra mockery, the old 1922, number 22 thing, 22nd minute with the goal kind of ruled out, uh, I'm really struggling to, to find kind of <laughs> some fun in this game today, um, but it ends up we get to half time, it's nil nil. It's pretty brutal. I mean, come in the second half and Morton. Of course, they're feeling confident. Why not go for it? Uh, they they're playing it as aggressively as, the, as their manager and as Canelli as their manager Doug Henry used to play when he used to come to Ibrox with Hamilton Ackies and what have you. Uh, next thing they're getting some set pieces. The next thing one of those set pieces leads to a penalty. I thought Cyril Dessers was fouled, but I am a massively uh, biased observer, so. Oh, VAR, I didn't even know VAR was in play today, uh, so there's VAR, the referee goes to the screen, you know what's going to happen, penalty to Morton, that's us conceded penalties to VAR in both Europe and uh, the League Cup at Ibrox this season, Morton stick away the penalty, uh, it's looking pretty desperate and then of course the, the, the big conspiracy, God forbid anybody should actually notice how many penalties are getting awarded against Rangers this season, the biggest conspiracy in world football. As soon as Rangers are in trouble, not only is it uh, ex-player Kurt Broadfoot, but you double that kind of Masonic stuff up with uh, the, the, the general refereeing conspiracy in our favour. And uh, Kurt Broadfoot apparently fouled Leon Balligan. I didn't see it happening. Uh, but it's a, a, a penalty to Rangers after an hour. So Morton are really in front for about seven minutes or what have you. Uh, and it was really weird because just at the time just before the referee got notified that something had happened in the box, we were making a treble substitution. So he's holding up the substitution. So we're in a situation where, I mean, Cyril Dessers goes up and, and strokes it away very nicely, uh, quite a convoluted <laughs> penalty routine, but he, he puts it away nicely in the end up. He then goes up to the, the Union Bears, who every time they're in the, the court, well, I'm sorry, we struggle. You know, all these pre-season friendlies this season, in this game of day, every time the Union Bears are in the court, we struggle. Luck-wise, I don't like it. Um, but he goes up to the Union Bears behind the goal and gives it, oh, yeah, right, come on, let's get a move on. You're thinking, no, Cyril, <laughs> we, we're fine. We know the score, it's used it to be getting a move on uh, in this game today. Uh, but you're in a situation where we've gone one nothing up and we've also brought on uh, Seema, uh, Hadji and who else did we bring on at that point? Uh, Danilo. And then there's a wee ball from Sifuentes into Danilo about uh, seven minutes later or something and he kind of holds off two or three players, shows all his class and, and slots it away. It's 2-1 and you're thinking, okay, party time. Uh, maybe we can pile this on and it's a bit like last week where the you know, we'll do all the heavy all the heavy lifting in the second half and put a bit of a shine on the scoreline like we did against Livingston, but no, <laughs> this wasn't to be. Um, apart from Yanis Hadji, I think he's quite a nice wee cameo today, Yanis Hadji. He uh, flashed a shot just over the bar and in a kind of twisted tribute to the women's game uh, with the, the World Cup final tomorrow between Spain and England. He took off his jersey, then removed his bra and cast it to the side and um, just as the, the sun was coming out and things were starting to look a bit more relaxed. Uh, that was it, really. Uh, I think Seema hit, hit the post, hit the bar with a header from kind of point-blank range. But yeah, that was it. 2-1, final score. We're through. That's the main thing, cup football. 
and uh, we've got you know a few more minutes in the legs of the forward players who need it and we've got a bit of rest for the likes of you know uh, for most of our defence really let's be honest for for uh, one of our centre halves and two of our full backs who are all going to be starting against PSV Peter Bosch coming to Ibrox on Tuesday night uh, with another massive European works team after he he beat us 3 1 here with uh, Bayer Leverkusen a few years ago. In between times, he's beat us 2 0 here with Leon. And now he's coming with the old uh, Philips Sport Vereniging. They are absolutely massive. They're absolutely brilliant, PSV. And they have, this will be the fifth time they've been at Ibrox. And so far, they have just lost one game and only failed to score in one of those visits. So I'm hoping that this is the only. They're nicknamed the Lampin, PSV, the, the, the light bulbs, and the night is usually darkest just before the dawn. So I hope Rangers, yet again, failing to please all of the people, even just one time <laughs> this season so far, is because we're keeping it all for Tuesday night. We'll certainly need it. So join us on the main pod tomorrow, folks, the Jersey Night main pod on your YouTube channel here, 9.30. It's going to be... Uh, Brian Archer in the hot seat and I think it's going to be Rob and Stuart Weir trying to find something uh, to be positive about in this game today other than the result but mostly I would imagine focusing on PSV on Tuesday. Thanks for your time folks, join us then.